Hello everyone and welcome back to Taito Ecology and we are in our beautiful bamboo grove biome aka our Himalaya mountains biome and it is time to see what has happened after we have left a bunch of rhinos alone inside of our biodome. So it looks like right now I hear squeaky. <gasps> Look at the baby Pika. It's a little baby Pika. Oh my gosh it's so cute. Oh you're so precious. I love you. I mean just isn't this so beautiful and we've got our gorgeous moths over here so the hawk moths are up and flying around again they're feeling good oh my gosh we've got the butterflies over here here's our goji berry bushes so what we need to do there's another pika and there's some mushrooms good oh look there's another pika oh who are you oh it's the log again the log with the little beetles the staghorn beetles there's another pika so yes what we need to do now is kind of fly around is there something sleeping right there is there a baby pika is there a baby pika in the ground? Hello? Hello? Are you a little baby pika? Is that what you are? I think there's a baby pika sleeping in the ground right here. That's kind of adorable. But, oh, look, and there goes another one. So it looks like the pika population is booming. And that's really good because we need that small herbivore population up and going in order to take care of future omnivores or future carnivores that we have. So pikas are doing fine. Uh, it looked like a bush was having some issues. Here's one of the fanged deer. Dun, dun, dun. Look at him go by with his fangs. Oh my gosh, he's actually really cool. And I think... Is it you, my friend? One of these, <laughs> I was about to say, one of these guys actually does eat the musk deer, was it? Um, uh, Grasses, no, it was the other one. Was it you? No, you're a musk deer too. There's another Pika. There's somebody here who, not the mouse deer, not the tiny guy, but there's somebody here. Oh, there's a red panda who eats the Pika, who may eat Pika actually. And it's a deer, believe it or not. Oh, oh, our bushes are dying. All right, so we may need to hopefully add in more gojis, but the problem is see how packed all of the poppies and all of the grasses, the, the little uh, fairy grass is. Well, we can't really add anything new in because we have just jam packed this whole area. So if we try to come in and like add in, say, a goji berry, because uh, that goji berry is starting to be over over harvested, dun -dun -dun, we can't do it because the biome actually does eventually kind of fall out of our hands in our way of influencing it and trying to help it along and it reaches a point where it gets old enough and established enough that we can't really add anything more in and you just kind of have to sit back and watch as your biome settles in so i've seen the red pandas and the deer there's another red panda um i hope the bamboo populations are doing okay here is oh it's a peccary or not the peccary it's it's a marmot it looked really weird like it looked like a pig straight on and i was like wait a second i don't think i have any of those and then here is another one of the musk deer so they're getting a little hungry but there should be plenty for them to eat i think they're just being a little lazy is that a baby marmot there's a little baby marmot there all right let's see how our pangolin are doing mouse deer sleeping marmots mouse deer are you guys eating they're just wandering around. They're just being adorable. And then we should have some pangolin. <gasps> baby pangolin! Wonderful! So we have some baby pangolin who are roaming around and doing well. I wonder how long the pangolin in 20 years in captivity. So I wonder how long we'll have ours. We'll probably have ours for a very long time because we're only about a year and three months-ish in to this biome. Oh, there's another little mouse deer. Is that a baby mouse deer? Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I really, oh, I just want to kind of pick it up and snuggle it because it's adorable. All right, but let's see if we can find our big guys and see if there's anything that leaps out at us as being, um, as being something we didn't really want. And I definitely didn't put fairy grass over here, by the way, and it has definitely spread over here. So there's more pikas. I actually have no idea which direction I'm facing anymore. There's another baby pika. So pika's everywhere. Good to know. Um, rhino! All right, so we found one of our rhinos, and it looks like he has come to nibble on this tree, the rhododendron, maybe? Okay, it's a 15-week-old rhino. Oh, wow! When it starts moving, it really starts moving. Wow, look at it! You guys, look at that! Man, that's really photogenic! All right, watch out, little marmot! And it's just roaming the open fields. So when it's hungry, where does it go to eat? Are you going to eat poppies? I kind of want to follow it around for a minute, this one-horned rhino. Because I want to see what what they are eating. 
because I don't know which of the plants, like the poppies, we have tons of mushrooms over here, so it could probably support a, a pika population. What is my one-horned rhino going to eat? They should be eating like grasses, leaves, branches. So I have lots and lots of fairy grass everywhere and I was a little nervous adding the rhinos in because I wasn't sure if they would eat something I don't want them to eat or if they're going to help me with the fountain grass. Because say if the fountain grass was a little bit more under control, then we might be able to put down more goji berry bushes. And it seems like the goji berry bushes for their fruits are going to be very important for some of our animals. I think the deer especially, who will eventually make the food for our snow leopards, the deer especially need to be um, tended to and have plenty of goji berries to eat. So he's still climbing around somewhere. I guess we could put goji berries over here. Yeah, let's have like a little goji slope. Maybe this will help out. All right, so, and we're gonna follow the rhino around till the rhino decides to eat something. So rhino, I'm just gonna kind of follow you and put down goji berries, cause this is gonna be our goji slope now. And if the deer make it all the way over here, they can have plenty of goji berries to eat. All right, oh, and we'll speed things up a little bit just so that, all right, come on buddy. Just so that we can get some coins coming in, the energy returning to us. Oh, we're up in some bamboo. That's so cool. I love bamboo forests. They're really fun. All right, are you going to eat goji berries? Oh, I hear the little squeaking of pika. Oh, and it's this guy. These muntjacks. They're the ones who will actually eat pika. They're omnivores. So we might follow a muntjack around in a little bit. Just to observe, because a lot of Taito ecology is put... <laughs> You're not helping, Rhino! <laughs> a lot of Taito Ecology is putting stuff down and then stepping back and watching as kind of nature takes its course and following things and seeing how they interact with one another. And I really love that. I think it's amazing. All right, so it's getting hungrier. So maybe we're on the move now for food. Here, I'm going to put some goji berries over here. And this is some of the joint fur. It looks like there's baby joint fur down there too. Wonderful. We need to make sure we have plenty of pollinators down. Look, you're getting really hungry, Rhino. Where the heck are you going? Are you coming for the honeysuckle? I should probably put more Himalayan honeysuckle down. But I feel like the honeysuckle does spread pretty well on its own. Where on earth are you headed off to, mister? He's like starving. There's pika. Are those pika? No, that's just fairy grass. There's a baby pika. Okay, here we go. And it has just eaten maidenhair ferns. I did not expect that. And it ate a lot of them. It almost destroyed that population of maidenhair ferns. You guys, i that was not what I was expecting. I didn't think our big tough rhinos, I thought maybe they would nibble some grass. But apparently maidenhair ferns are a thing they enjoy. So I guess that means I need to start sprinkling maidenhair ferns in when I get a free opportunity to. So that's good. And let's see, the other ones we did add in were the mint jack. And then I think that was it. And we were getting ready to possibly add in a bear. <sighs> I'm so nervous about adding in some uh, of the like carnivore omnivores, the ones who are actually going to focus more. Come on, honeysuckle, you can do it. You can do it, honeysuckle's like, no, there's too much stuff everywhere. I can't do it. I can't show up here. But honeysuckle, you'd be so cute right there. You'd be so, so well off if I could just stick you on the side of this cliff, but I can't because there's too much fairy grass. <laughs> we need to find who's actually eating the fairy grass and like put more of those guys down. All right, anyway, and hopefully I showed you guys at the start of the video. I'll have to see if I can remember to do that, but I'm trying to show you guys pictures of the real life equivalents of the animals we're studying. And I found an adorable picture of a pika that was actually <laughs> carrying the grass in its mouth and it was so cute. All right, but now that we have seen that the rhino seems to be doing okay, and that rhino is doing okay, and are the muntjacks doing okay? Muntjacks? Uh, there's the musk deer. They seem like they're doing fine. And let's see, average plant health, 99%, probably because it's being eaten. Average animal health is really good. Our diversity is going up, so we're getting points for diversity. And yeah, I think we'll start expanding soon and adding in our first carnivore, because it's been a long time. But let's go ahead and see what this has to say. Group of pikas has split. Oh my gosh. We might have a lot more of these guys. Oh my gosh, it's just talking about how there's like mushrooms and how the pikas have spread. So I think it's okay. On with the territory markers. And let's check this out. I think it's okay to add in a pika, a pika predator. 
I, I think I'm willing to accept the idea of a Pika predator now that we have all of these little Pika running around. They actually seem to be doing very, very, very well for themselves too. So we do have a lot of little Pika running around. I would like to see a few more groups. Yeah, it looks like this group is probably about to split because they have some juveniles, they reproduce in 21 days and they're already at max occupancy. Uh, yeah, I would like to see yeah, 90 days, they have 9 babies. I would like to see maybe a few more of them born. Um, just to keep things moving and grooving. Also, let's get a moth, a couple moth, maybe a green hawk moth up here in the shade so that they can pollinate these beautiful little goji trees. Um, and then, yeah, actually, I think red fox. I kind of want to add in the red fox because it's a medium level carnivore. I'm probably going to focus on eating the, the, um, Pikas, but at the same time the Asian black bear would be really fun and Now the dolls. Oh my gosh. They're kind of aggressive So I I think we may add a fox in first or an Asian black bear and kind of work our way up to the dolls Because I don't think we have enough deer yet and they really there's a lot of them and they hunt pretty actively. So I think we need to build up a much bigger population of deer to be able to endure having them. And then the Asian elephant would be amazing to let roam, but I kind of want to get them after we unlock the entire biodome. And the Bengal tiger and the snow leopard are actually two of my absolute favorite animals. So I would love to add those guys in. So yeah, we're going to start with a, a small fox, I think. We're going to smart, or actually let's start with a black bear. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add the black bear in right now. And then we'll just have to kind of hold still and close our eyes and hope I didn't make a terrible decision. And where should we add him in? So let's look very carefully at where all the, ter the territory markers are. We have Pika everywhere, but I think he's going to focus on things like the mouse deer. He might try to go for the red pandas. Um, he might try to go for all of these deer. Uh, he might try to eat mushrooms and earthworms and the beetles because bears are omnivores. They do eat things like that. Or even the honeysuckles and goji berries first. So I think I want to put the black bear in over like here, over here, yeah about here and then we're just gonna kind of work on building this area up a little bit with lots of insects maybe some pangolins roaming around and maybe some of the mouse deer roaming up here and then we'll see if we can support our bear so there we go <laughs> oh i can't believe i did it okay okay don't panic everyone the very first carnivore has been added and now we're gonna have to see what they get up to oh my gosh we've done it Look at the pika. The pika's like, ah, what is this strange creature? This the land, the peaceful land of like prosperity, has come to an end. Hello, beautiful. You are amazing. Smile for the camera, my friend. And we will read up about you in just a second. Are you gonna take a nap? Yep. Time to nap. They're so adorable when they do that. All right. So let's read about the Asian black bear. So, Asian black bear size, pretty pretty up there, lifespan up there, reproduction pretty low, interestingly enough. Diet. Despite their large canines and sharp incisors, Asian black bears are mainly herbivorous. They forage in trees for fruit and insects and rarely hunt live prey. Asian black bears will also eat dead fish, but they're not equipped to hunt them. Asian black bears are rarely hunted, but young bears are known to be preyed on by larger predators such as tigers. Adult bears are also attacked by tigers on occasion, though this is usually because they have wandered too near the tiger's food. Depending on their location, Asian black bears may or may not hibernate. If their habitat is colder, they're more, encour they're more encouraged to conserve their energy and hibernate from November until March. The bears near Biodome will not hibernate and will remain lively all year long. Well, that's wonderful. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. And where have you gone, my little one? There's a deer. I think the deer might actually be more of a threat to the, uh, the pika population than the bears. Well, where'd the bear go? <laughs> How did I lose a bear? I had the bear for two seconds. Look at my beautiful puppy fields. I had the bear in here for two seconds and already I've lost him. Huh. And I feel like we do need to add in more deer populations than the small deer, the big deer, all sorts of deer. There's plenty of grass to support their population. And if I'm going to add in the wild dogs and eventually the snow leopard or the tiger, uh, we may not be able to support all of those in this biome. And that's actually kind of, kind of humbling to think about. Where did my bears go? How does one just, there's a bear, there's a bear up here. 
Hi, buddy. Well, let's get some insects for you. So we're gonna get a bear for this, or insects for this guy. So there's gonna be earthworms to eat, earthworms over here, and then we'll put some more mushrooms over here. We'll add some stag beetles in, because they do eat uh, insects. I, I've often, like whenever I see bears, um, and they do have black bears, which is where I live in North Carolina, but like especially up in the mountains. But and I've seen them a couple times, but just like on the side of the road, uh, as you drive by, and you're like, "Did I really just see a bear?" And you're like, "Wow, that was amazing! I didn't really expect to see a bear." And you're on the highway, so you can't exactly just like turn around. But uh, whenever I do see bears, they're usually just like rooting around for food in trash cans, or they are trying to get food uh, from insects. So there's some honeysuckles, and we can add in more earthworms, kind of sprinkled all over the place. And then, let's see, what else should we add in? Maybe some more maidenhair ferns? I don't know. I think maybe some blue poppies, like up at the very top. And then we'll see if the blue poppies, maybe some joint fur back here. I actually, I don't know why. I'm not really sure what I would do with joint fur, but I just feel like there should be some up along the edge of this cliff side. Just because it doesn't really have anywhere else to grow in our entire in our entire territory. There we go. Alright, thank you. Weekly income. And I kind of want to get some more fairy grass going. And then we'll leave it to spread over here. Our bear is snoozing. So our bear made it a little bit further and then fell asleep. And then I also think that we need to put in more goji bushes. Because these are extremely useful. The deer eat them. I'm pretty sure the bears are going to rely on things that have fruits. And I don't think we have too many options for fruiting plants outside of the... Um, where's the apples? Oh, pomegranates! Pomegranates would be a good fruiting plant. If I can get a few pomegranate trees snuck down over here. Ooh, I can put it up the side of the cliff a little bit! Yes! Look at that! Look at my little cliff side pomegranate tree! That's so cool! But yeah, we probably want to put down several things that would be fruit bearing for the bears. Ha 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 ha, get it? Fruit bearing for the bears. Uh, but yeah, and then lots of deer. I think we're going to add some deer in over here because I can't get anything planted. Because <laughs> there's so much fairy grass everywhere. So I think we might add in like a herd of deer pretty soon. We'll just kind of go bonkers on the deer. All right, let's keep going. I want rhododendrian over here. Come on, come on. Can I put, can I put, ah, oh, there we go. I can put pretty rhododendrian up along the side of the cliff like this. <laughs> That's actually kind of cool, watching it just like climb up the side of the cliff. And then you just kind of wiggle around. Come on. So much grass everywhere. Yeah, I think next time we'll add in several deer and we will expand the biome. And hopefully between doing that, We'll be able to make enough room to get wild dogs in the future. I'm thinking snow leopard. Pretty sure I want to do snow leopard first because I'm a sucker for snow leopards. All right, we'll put more goji berries over here too. And then we're going to need more stag beetles. And we're going to need more earthworms. They can go live up there. And then we're going to need some pollinators. And we should probably start putting like ants. And I wonder if the ant colonies spread. I really feel like the ant colonies should kind of be like the pica colonies. Especially because they're a food source. And start spreading as time goes on. Alright, come on, come on. There we go. Yeah, because we want to have some pangolins walking around up here eventually. And we'll get some green hawk moths up here. So that they can properly pollinate everything. And then we need to get lots and lots of deer down here because <laughs> we just need to start like actually clearing away some of this grass. So yeah, I think next time we will expand and we will be adding in tons of deer. But let's go see. Oh, look at our tree. Oh, it's so cool. I think that our, our tree is getting ready. Yeah, look, 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 look. It's fruiting. So it's, or it's um, flowering. So it's going to be fruiting in about another couple months. So that is going to be super awesome. Wow, it's so pretty here. Look at the little marmot. Are you eating the poppies? Are you eating these little poppies, little marmot? You're so adorable. But yeah, we do have a lot of prey animals. So I'm thinking a fox soon. And a fox may be a good medium. Hmm, maybe a good animal to add in and just kind of see how the, the pika population can survive. Um, there goes an adorable little mouse deer. Where'd you go? <gasps> Look at him. See, and they like the goji berries too. So yeah, goji berries all over the place. And maybe the, they'll just like ignore the grass until the goji berries are gone. I'm not sure. And it looks like our bears are just kind of wandering around 
especially up against the cliffside, which is interesting. And let's just see one of them eat really quickly. So this guy is hungrier. And so we'll follow this black bear around till it eats and we'll see what it's going for because it's kind of wandering pretty far away. Let's see. Asian black bears live in forests, including temperate, deciduous, and lowland. They need dense vegetation these forests provide for food and shelter. Wonderful. A group of pikas has just split. <laughs> I bet that's the one in zone two that we were kind of keeping an eye on. Yep, I'm pretty sure that's the one in zone two. And then we'll keep an eye on you until I can figure out what you're going to eat. Asian black bears are most common in Central and Southern Asia, but fossil records have found that they once lived as far west as France and Germany. Due to the distinctive crescent-shaped pattern on its chest, the Asian black bear is sometimes called the moon bear. Interesting. All right, where are you going, moon bear? Okay, it's moving now. All right, there's there's some stag beetles. Are we, nope, we're passing up the stag beetles. There's some mushrooms up ahead. There's some earthworms. All right, what are we going to eat? I'm really, really, really curious, actually. <laughs> Cause this is gonna really, are you going for the ants? Wow, my, you're gonna, are you gonna compete with my pangolins? Nope, run right past the ants. What about goji berries? No, okay. It has its eyes locked on something. Clearly not the bamboo. Honeysuckle? Ferns? Wow, I need to add more ferns in. What am I doing? Wow, okay, my rhinos and my blares. My rhinos and my bears are focused on ferns. I did not did not expect that. I thought they would be into other other plants, but no, they really they have a focus on ferns. So there we have it. All right. Well, I'll see you guys next time when we will hopefully be adding in lots more deer. We will be expanding and we will get ready to add in some of the unique carnivores. I keep saying foxes because I think they would be good for the pika population, but I think I don't know. The dolls make me nervous. We'll add in deer and then I might be more confident and be willing to add in the wild dogs. So we'll have to see what we do next time. And there's our little snoozing bear in the pile of poppies. And I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.